to dedicate time to my own website um, some weeks or even months, um, I know it's in good hands. I've known Luke and Ant for years now and I know they're good boys. You can always get in contact with anybody there. It just gives us confidence. We started with very little knowledge of the industry and again, they've worked with us over the time. They have the knowledge, the capability, and the real understanding of the, the kind of market we're in. That they've been really open, really friendly. They, I think, no, I think, I definitely know that they push the boat on a lot of, on, on, on a lot of projects. Even though we say do this, they'll probably do five things going towards that. So yeah, it's been great. You know, these people are experts in, in what they, what they say they do. For us, they've been a, a massive positive, and, uh, and you know, moved the business. Forward. It's been a great working relationship and we look forward to, to it continuing. We always get a quick response. If I send an email, an email comes back. If I call up, people call back. It's probably doubled the amount of visits to the site uh, and conversions have gone up, up significantly. I would not hesitate in recommending Sleeping Giant to non-competitors of mine. <laughs> We're, um, we're big fans of Sleeping Giant Media and Giant Campus. We love all of the courses and we have learned a lot. And everyone seems really happy and seems really keen to, to share their knowledge. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a really great company. 100% recommend it to everyone. It's uh, hosted by Sleeping Giant Media. And I came away with what I felt was the makings of um, a strategy that I could actually apply to the business. We've been working with Sleeping Giant Media for a little over three years, SEO. Um, you've helped us with the migration of our website when we switch domains, um, content creation, um, outreach work. It's been a great customer experience. Um, I know that if I'm not able to dedicate time to my own website um, some weeks or even months, um, I know it's in good hands. I've known Luke and Ant for years now and I know they're good boys. You can always get in contact with anybody there. It just gives us confidence. We started with very little knowledge of the industry and again, they've worked with us over the time. They have the knowledge, the capability, and the real understanding of the, the kind of market we're in. That they've been really open, really friendly. They, I think, no, I think I definitely know that they push the boat on a lot of, on, on, on a lot of projects. Even though we say do this, they'll probably do five things going towards that. So yeah, it's been great. You know, these people are experts in, in what, they, what they say they do. For us, they've been a, a massive positive and, uh, and you know, moved the business forward. It's been a great working relationship and we look forward to, to it continuing. and we have learned a lot and everyone seems really happy and seems really keen to to share their knowledge so oh, yeah. yeah it's um it's a really great company 100 percent recommend it to everyone it's uh, hosted by sleeping giant media and i came away with what i felt was the makings of um, a strategy that i could actually apply to the business we've been working with sleeping giant media for a little over three years seo um, you've helped us with the migration of our website when we switch domains, um, content creation, um, outreach work. It's been a great customer experience. Um, I know that if I'm not able to dedicate time to my own website um, some weeks or even months, um, I know it's in good hands. I've known Luke and Ant for years now and I know they're good boys. You can always get in contact with anybody there. It just gives us confidence. We started with very little knowledge of the industry and again, they've worked with us over the time. They have the knowledge, the capability, and the real understanding of the, the kind of market we're in. That they've been really open, really friendly. They, I think, no, I think, I definitely know that they push the boat on a lot of, on, on, on a lot of projects. Even though we say do this, they'll probably do five things going. Hi guys and welcome to the Business As Unusual show. If you are new to this channel, my name is Luke. I'm the CEO of Sleeping Giant Media and Giant Campus. We focus on getting relevant traffic to our clients' websites and you can find loads more of our content on LinkedIn, on YouTube. We have a new uh, Giant Wednesday video as well, which has just gone live on our YouTube channel, which I will promote in just a second or a bit way, bit way through the show. Uh, today we have a fantastic guest. We have Amalia from the Family Business Place. She's got a massive event coming up next week, which we're going to talk about, but also get some insights into um, the fa how family businesses are faring during this situation. So without further ado, let's get the show on the road.
Hi, and welcome to Wednesday at 4.30. We have got to the end of the day, and again, it's totally okay to bring a beer with you to this show. It's absolutely um, the right time, I feel. It's kind of, we, we survived the day. Um, we are going to be talking to Amalia in a second, but again, any questions, any com- any bits that you want to throw out there, uh, please do chuck it in the chat. We're going to see, um, we, I think we're on, on Facebook. We are also on YouTube. So any comments, please do chuck them in there. They'll filter through to me and I can feed them back to Amalia. So without further ado, let's introduce Amalia. How you doing? I'm all right, Luke. How are you? I'm very well. Is it is it okay? You you, you can see me okay at this point. Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> okay, that's a bad sign. Okay, I will try and work out the technical bits whilst um whilst we talk. Um, so well, just give me a, a quick update. How it, so? Introduction firstly to who you are, what you do, just for the for the viewers that um haven't come across you yet. Sure. So um, I'm Amalia brightly Good. I'm Managing Director of Family Business Place. Um, and we are based in Kent, but we're a national network for the leaders of family-owned businesses. So it does what it says on the team, really. If you run a family business, it might be a startup, it might be a third generation, it might be 15 generations. But if you work with your family, then we run this amazing membership where we can help you and support you and promote you. Amazing, and you guys do some some incredible work. Which, and we're going to talk a bit more about your um, your summit coming up next Thursday, yeah. uh, which is really exciting. I just want to point out as well that you, because of your the longest name, um, <laughs> the the name card underneath what the your screen doesn't quite cover it. So I can I can only apologise. We need I to... had that problem at school. Don't worry. Okay, good to know. It's, yeah, we're going to have to update our uh, our design. I'll feed it. I'll feed it back to the, the design team. So um, when it, when we're talking about kind of um, family businesses, how are they how are they faring? Because I was we were briefly chatting pre-show around. Ironically, because of the lockdown, they're able to potentially be together, and, and actually that might help their kind of productivity. Yeah, so we're sort of living and breathing it because we are a family business. And because at the moment I live with my mum and my sister and my husband, um, we can all carry on going to work together because we're all still in the same household. And a lot of our members have got that as well. They might run manufacturing units, warehouses. A lot of them are saying, you know, hi, family members are on the factory floor today, um, keeping operations going. So that's, you know, that's an upside of being a family business. And how how is it going? I mean, obviously, you've got, you have a huge number of businesses in your in your network. How, I mean... Give us an overview of the the general kind of sentiment. I know it's difficult because everybody's in quite different kind of places. But how how what are the yeah. conversations that you're having? I mean, is it more highs than lows, more lows than highs? How's it how's it looking? It's um I think in the first week or two weeks, I think like probably every business owner out there, it was quite paralyzing. Mm. Um, no, I don't think anybody on this earth has been through something like this before. Many family businesses who have spanned generations might have been through, you know, world wars and great recessions and all sorts. But I don't think anyone's seen anything like this. So for our members, we've got, I don't know, 150 around the UK, mm. um, all industries, all sizes. So for a lot of them, the first couple of weeks was just like, OK, what on earth are we going to do? How are we going to figure it out? Um, particularly before the furlough scheme and the C bills and now we've got the bounce back loan. I think people were just thinking, I don't know what we're going to do here. Mm. Um, but as we've sort of relaxed into this this new normal and this new <laughs> way of working, um, I think people are starting to figure it out. Mm. Um, the furlough scheme takes a huge pressure off. Some of our manufacturing members are starting to open up units again with a sort of a skeleton team um, and start get business going again, you know. Mm. Yeah, it sounds positive. I, um, I don't know if you've, um, obviously there's a big update on Sunday from the government as well. I mean, that's kind of, that could go, I guess, either way to, to kind of help that, you know, that recovery or, you know, to a degree, put another another sort of dent in the confidence for people as well. Yeah, it's it's really hard because you're you're trying to juggle, you know, people's health and then mm. people's livelihoods. Yeah, and they're, you know the two single most important things to us. And um and I would not want to be Boris or the Chancellor for all the money in the world. Yeah, no, I, I think it's um a, it's two bad decisions, isn't it? And it's kind of absolutely one of, uh, yeah. Those. And I think there's I don't know if you see have you seen about this this a parallel problem as well that, that they're talking about where there's obviously the kind of the you know the, the sort of the death rate that's associated with the current pandemic but then if if the the economy's so bad long term then again there's yeah. a there's a the secondary impact on as well which is a pr- pretty doom and gloom so let's move quickly beyond that cuz <laughs> there's so much doom and gloom out there i kind of want to try to to focus on the, the the sort of the the positives where we can because i think you know regardless of that there's still you know the more positive we can be about it the quicker we kind of we get out the other side you know whatever that, totally. that other side looks like um 
you you do doing a lot of work obviously with with your kind of your members and I guess leadership comes up quite a lot as well in terms of um, you know some of the challenges that um, the owners particularly that you, you work with kind of face could you give us kind of insights into some of the the conversations that you've been having with those guys yeah so I think you know if you're an independent business whether you're family owned or you're an entrepreneur or you're you know like a large independent when it's when you're running your own business everyone is looking to you for the answers and particularly in family businesses where very often your name is literally above the door you know you've got to think about timpsons you know mm. um it's, that that is tough as a leader and you know even on a good day <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility it's very stressful you know some of our members one of our members employed three thousand people oh. so can you think about the livelihoods that mm. are on his shoulders at the moment um so as a leader that's really tough and I think once you've got all the, the practical things out the way of the furlough and the loans and all that sort of stuff, now it's time to think about, okay, what does it mean for me as a leader? What do I need to do? How do I dig deep and put one foot in front of the other every single day to lead my business and my team through this? Because everyone is looking at me. Yeah. And that, that takes a lot of mental strength. You know, I run my own business. We're, I mean, we're tiny by comparison to lots of businesses out there. You run your own business, Luke. And it's, you know, it's stressful because what? we're the ones that go home no. at night and lay, lay awake in bed <laughs> thinking, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Mm, it, yeah. It, it's hard. It's hard. What, um, and, um, yeah, I, I would uh, echo those thoughts. It's been some, uh, some, some late nights and um, some, <laughs> some challenging conversations about kind of what to do next. What, um, what sort of advice do you, do you, you know, can you, can you offer to kind of leaders in, in those kind of positions? So I think, you know, when you run your own business, I think we're probably all guilty of worrying about everyone else first. Mm. Um, and I particularly, you know, and I'm a, I'm a mum, I've got a, th a three-year-old Hendrix, and I'm always worried about him and the rest of my family first. And that translates to our business. I'm worried about, you know, our staff and our team, and are they happy? And are they satisfied in their work? And, and actually, it's times like this where you need to, you know, a bit like when you're on an airplane, you need to put the oxygen mask on you first. And you need to figure yourself out first. And you might need to retrain. You might need to learn some new stuff. You might need to make those hard decisions. But you need to be kind to yourself before you can worry about everyone else. I like because it. if you're not okay, the rest of the business is not okay. Yeah, I and like I it except for the disaster analogy of a, of a plane going down. That's the, that's the only <laughs> bit that I don't like about that analogy. There's not labour on that point. <laughs> um, but I think so many of us who run businesses are guilty of putting everyone else first. But you have to look after your own mental health and well-being. Mm. You know, even if it is just, you know, your exercise or your diet or your meditation or whatever it might be. Mm. Um, and invest in yourself, in your own training. So if you're not comfortable with the finances or the marketing or the sales operations, you know, take some time to get to know all that stuff so that you can make the right decisions, the mm. difficult decisions. Um, but you need to look after yourself as a leader. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think if I remember correctly, you were you were doing some runs before, weren't you? You were training for a marathon, I believe. Don't re please don't remind people, Luke. <laughs> I think you, and and how how is the running going now? Are you still are you still doing that? Um, sure. So I was <laughs> yeah. the end of I'm just marathon making sure and, that you're um... taking your own advice here. I'm just making sure that you're <laughs> well, doing. I was supposed to do in the Edinburgh Marathon, but right. um, unfortunately, it got postponed till next year. Yes. So, you know, yeah. I am still doing running. And you know what? My my mum, bless her, she's 61. Um, and last year, she decided to run um, 52 park runs. So one every single week to raise money for Alzheimer's research. So I sort of went along and helped G her up. And we did a massive run last week. And, and it's just time away, isn't it? And yeah. Now, you hear this thing all the time. You have to work, you know, on the business, not in the business. Mm. But if you can get some headspace and you can start thinking, that's where the best ideas come from. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin, thanks for the comments in chat. And I think your sister there, Olympia, she is chitting in <laughs> as well. Good support. The family are there supporting and everything you do, which is uh, which is good to see. So um, tell me a bit about the um, event next week. Because obviously you're, not, you're normally focusing on uh, family businesses. But I think this is more around yeah. independent businesses, if I'm correct. Yeah. So, you know, we, as well as being a membership, we, we run um, fantastic events up and down the country um, normally. In, in person <laughs> yeah. um, and we just thought okay well we don't want to because that's where the magic happens it's when family business owners meet mm. and we do want that to stop so um we launched a virtual summit 
um, which is happening next Thursday, the 14th. But you're right. It's not just about family businesses. It's about anyone that runs an independent business. Mm. So it's called Independence Day. And it doesn't matter if you're a tiny, you know, high street shop or if you're a tech startup or if you're a, a large third generation construction firm. If you run your own business, it's going to be amazing because it's not the doom and gloom. Yeah. It's about right inspiration, motivation, and we have got some awesome speakers. So I mentioned Timpson's earlier. So we've got jo Sir John Timpson, and he started with nothing. He now has 2,000 stores, 5,000 wow. employees. Um, he knows a thing or two about running your own business, you know. Um, we've got um, Dane Gadia, who started Virgin Money with Richard Branson. Um, we've got some dodgy tech geek called Luke Quilter talking about <laughs> transformation. <laughs> I'm, I'm I have to say, I'm like, as I saw the lineup in increase, I was like, I don't have any titles. I've just Luke Quilter. There's nothing next to my name. You've not got a gong. You've not got an OBE got, or a CPE or a... No, I don't. I had, you know, there's some cool stuff I've done. I'm like, you know, I'm not, you know, it's all right. I've done some stuff, but I don't have the cool kind of like, you know, MBE, OBE, Dame or whatever. I have nothing like that. It's just me. Just me. Just you. Just you. <laughs> It's Luke from Kent. <laughs> yeah, that'd be me. I'm, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think, it, I, I mean, you know, it should be a really, really cool event. And actually, uh, I've got a BA, apparently. Someone has reminded me of that. I should put that. Yeah. No, that's, I don't think it's worth celebrating, to be honest with you. It wasn't, it, it was an okay <laughs> university. It wasn't, it wasn't the best one. But I was actually, I was going to say, um, Olympia, if you're there with a, with a link to the event, please do chuck it in chat. Or one of my guys, if you've got the link to hand, if you can chuck it in the chat. That would be great. So if anyone else is um, listening and wants to, to, to find out more, they can um, check it out on your website. Yeah, cool. Thanks. No pressure, Olympia. Get it right. Quickly. Go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, think, I think the point is, if you run your own business, it can feel really lonely, can't it? Sometimes you just feel like, okay, nobody else surely can be going through this. And the whole idea of the virtual summit is to say that even the, the biggest of brands, you know, those household names, even they were sat at the kitchen table one day thinking, how on earth are we going to get out of this? Or what mm. are we going to do? Or the sleepless nights. And the point is, you don't have to make the same mistakes. You don't have to spend weeks and months trying to figure something out for yourself when all of these amazing business people have gone before you and, and done the hard work. <laughs> yeah. You know, they've got some real secrets to success and some great, you know, ways to spark new ideas. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to encapsulate the magic of a real in-person event. And we're going to do it online. So, amazing. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. That's awesome. And actually, I mean, the I don't know how much um, of the sort of virtual networking you've done so far. So have you been? Have you been to any at all? Am I I've done a few. <laughs> yeah, I, I the one. So I've, I've been to one, and I thought it was actually pretty good. I was quite surprised yeah. at actually how how well it went. I thought I was kind of quite skeptical about um, kind of how it how it might pan out, but actually it's been it's been really really positive. So maybe even uh, my my kind of next question is what happens as we move out into what we're calling kind of the recovery into then the new world. Like what happens when we get the out the other side? Do you think you might continue more? kind of more of these events perhaps I mean obviously I guess we'll find out how it goes on next next week but yeah I, mean... I, th I think I think <laughs> when you run your own business networking is pretty core to everything that you do mm. um in its formal and informal capacity and I think people will crave getting out and just you know seeing the whites of people's eyes again and, mm. and shaking hands and having a good old natter over a coffee um but what I have learned and lots of people say this to me is how effective you can be networking online you know, there, there's no sort of um, chit chat. You just get straight to the point, <laughs> yeah. particularly if you have a free Zoom account and you only get 40 minutes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that does put some time pressure on. <laughs> um, and and I, I kind of like the fact, you know, we've all been stripped bare. I've seen the inside of your front room. I saw your daughter the other day. I've seen people <laughs> in their pajamas. And I, think, I feel like we've all gone back to just being good, normal human people. beings. Yeah. And sometimes in business, it's a bit of a facade, isn't it? And you rock mm. up in your suit and... And I think it's really nice now that we've sort of seen inside people's lives and we can just talk on a really human level. Um, and, I, and I hope that we don't regress back to what it was before because that would just be completely in vain. We wouldn't have learned anything. So Agreed. I think there have been some fantastic things come out of this. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, and it is this bizarre world that we live in where suddenly, you know, the, the people I speak to sort of like, you know, top end CEOs that I'm sort of like and again you see their front room or their dining room <laughs> or whatever and it's like their kids coming and their dogs jumping yeah, on them and stuff yeah. like that and it's it is a very human um yeah. you know situation yeah. that we're, we're kind of in and yeah I agree hopefully some of this some of this carries forward and also people being um quite willing to admit that they need help yeah so I think been a lot more of that recently and, and some amazing people are offering that help for free you know we work with law firms and county firms who've just said tell your members just ring us and we'll sort it out for them hmm. and, I, and I think you know it's okay to say I'm stuck or I don't know what to do or you know I have no idea how to do that 
and um and i've and my mum and my sister will laugh at this but i've got a phrase that you don't have to get it right you just have to get it going and i think that's so true now so all these businesses true. that have had yeah. to pivot, you know these fruit wholesalers that are now delivering to people's houses and you know it's not perfect of course the website's going to mm. crash and they're not going to get the orders right 100 percent of the time and but you don't have to get it right you just have to get it going don't be scared to just give something a go Absolutely. No, I totally agree. And uh, we're, we're doing all around what we call the restart up mentality because it feels yeah. like a startup scenario. You've obviously kind of yeah. been there, been through it. Um, yeah. And it's like, it feels a lot of, you know, there's, there's some differences admittedly, but there's some, so many similarities and that failure and that kind of not being afraid to do that and then move on yeah. kind of really quickly is, is super important. Yeah. So um, obviously, so next week, I know that obviously I know you're going to be tuning, I think my time's 10.45. I know that's going to be your, your top of your list, but <laughs> outside of, of me, who, who is, who's your kind of, who's the one you're looking forward to kind of the most? I think I've heard John Timpson speak before and yeah. What I love about him is he has got a hugely successful business. Like I say, 5,000 employees, I think. Um, but he really sticks the middle finger up at sort of, you know, business textbook stuff. He has a book called Upside Down Management. And every, his sole purpose is to provide his customer with a great service. Mm. So his staff have complete autonomy to, you know, make things right with customers. If they need to give away a free pair of, you know, shoe resoling to make things right. And, and, I, and I love that customer-centric um, element of well it's not even an element it's the core of what they do um, and then you know things like 10 percent of their employees um, have a criminal record because okay. they are so passionate about retraining people who've been in prison mm. um, and, I, and, and they're things that most people would just really shy away from and he's basically a big you know f you to your your bog standard business um, and he, it's, it's so inspiring. It's So when he interviews for people, he doesn't have a whole long list of questions. He has a sheet with five things on it. How firm was their handshake? How nice is their smile? How clean is their, are their shoes? And two other things, I can't remember what they are. He said, because if, if I know those five things about a person, I can train them to cut keys. I can mm -hmm. train them to resell shoes, but I cannot teach them to be fantastic customer facing people. Mm. Um, there's little things like that really that you can just learn so much from he's got I don't know 40 years experience in business and you know and that is invaluable completely priceless that's very cool I wonder how that's going to operate in a virtual environment in terms of the handshake but again, assuming we can we, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a diff, different set of five questions I suspect on, on his sheet <laughs> how could your wi-fi <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that question I'm gonna pose that question if he has to interview if he has to do interviews remotely what questions would you now ask but um, amazing, yeah, amazing. No, that's really cool I'm really looking forward to it so yeah. um what what are the sort of um things been going on in your kind of the personal life how are you how are you kind of balancing the you know the work and, and kids as well <laughs> <laughs> um well the great thing about being a family business um is that we sort of share childcare duty so that hasn't changed oh, nice. so okay. Hendrix is having the time of his life because mm -hmm. he gets his nan on one day, his granddad another day, his, his auntie on another day, Amazing. being week on another day, he's loving life. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it helps me because it talks about, you know, mental strength and headspace. And, and it's really hard if you're a working parent mm. to try and focus on growing a business and looking after a team and getting out of this, you know, pickle that we're in. Um, and feeling like, okay, I haven't got time for my children. I'm not doing the best by them. Luckily, he's not at the point of homeschooling yet. Um, mm. We've got a member and she jumped on a call. She's trying to homeschool five children and run a family business. I mean, wow. that's extraordinary. Hats yeah. off to her. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's good here. It's, it's lovely. I'm really, really lucky. You know, we live mm. in a nice house in Kent with a nice big garden. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bit of space. But, um, yeah, I've got friends who are struggling. I think, you know, so every now and then I get a WhatsApp or I'll send a WhatsApp saying, I've just had a really crappy day. Mm. Does anyone want to talk? Um, and that goes back to saying it's all right to say you're struggling. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's well, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear. I don't know if men or women are better at doing that. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've got, I've got some mates who are... I think, well, actually, no, yeah, they weren't, they weren't, I don't think they were so overtly saying that they were struggling. Yeah. I think it was more physically, <laughs> you could just look at them on the Zoom chat, you're like, mate, <laughs> you, you, you look at, you, you look a little bit like worse for wears right now. Um, but I think, I think some people are kind of uh, leaning into it. I've got friends just growing massive beards at this point in time, just because yeah. I think they're kind of leaning into the idea of isolation and kind of turning yeah. into kind of like castaway scenarios. It um, the system when they come out. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, so what, in terms of the content you're seeing kind of pushing out, there's some businesses that you've seen 
doing some, I mean, obviously you mentioned kind of Timpsons. What other businesses doing? Like a really strong job out there at the moment, sharing some kind of, um, you know, awesome ideas and content that yeah. you could kind of shout out. Well, there's, there's quite a few. So I follow obviously quite a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of the, you know, the Dragon's Den type people who have, they've grown something from nothing. They may have lost everything along the way. They may have been rock bottom, but they've come out the other side. So people, so actually someone I've been in contact with recently is a, a lady called Holly Tucker and she founded notonthehighstreet.com. You know, mm. phenomenal success story. Um, but now she runs a business and they've got a campaign called SME SOS. And they're just sending out amazing content to help the owners of small businesses. Awesome. Um, and what I love about her is that she shows up every day. You know, it's not like just a sporadic here and there. Mm. Um, it's not like really rigid scheduled stuff. She just rocks up every day on her stories, on her lives. And, and it's and I think if you're a small business owner, it's that feeling part of a community and that someone mm. is there in your corner. So she's she's amazing. Okay, um, great. Yeah. And, and I just think anyone. So. Um, but my, one of my role models is a lady called Michelle Moan who founded Ultimo. Okay. But she's doing Q&As live on Instagram, ask me any question and I will answer it for you. And it goes back to that thing of learning from other people's mistakes mm. or learning other people's secrets to success that you don't have to try and figure it out yourself. Yeah. So there, yeah, there's some amazing people out there who themselves have, you know, got businesses that may be struggling or in trouble mm. um, trying to figure out technology in their, in their own home when before they had a whole team. Um, so yeah, there's some brilliant people out there. Awesome. Well, we'll have to uh, tag those guys in and give them a shout out because I think it's a, it's a really important time to find um, some of those really awesome pieces of content because I think that the tricky bit is there's a lot of noise out there right now. There's a lot of stuff being pushed out and it's trying to find the ones that are doing a really awesome job. So we'll um, we'll kind of tag those guys in. Um, yeah. I'm still waiting for this link, by the way, Olympia. <laughs> I haven't seen that. And I can see that your mum is now on the chat as well. <laughs> <laughs> she's reiterated your uh you don't have to get it right you just have to get going so, yeah. so you seem to have you seem to have won them over with that one yeah. um, well, um, no, okay good. Yeah, exactly <laughs> come on guys right come on you've got to be standing by with this sort of stuff um and a question um from your mom was how do you see the rise um of women entrepreneurs as well yeah, so it's an interesting one because in family businesses, there was a piece of research that we did with Synergy Bank that said men are twice as likely to take over the family business as a woman. And I and I find that, on one hand, astonishing, but on the other hand, not surprising um, because, you know, at the time when you've maybe graduated university, you've had your first job, and then you think, okay, now I'm thinking about starting a business, it probably coincides with the time you want to start a family as well. Mm. And, you know, I know that's really tough. I, I, haven't, I had Hendrix three years ago. I suffered from really bad postnatal depression. I ended up having to take a whole year off and then had to come when it, I came back as managing director. And so in terms of mental strength, that takes mm. a lot. And yeah. I think that's really hard for women. But now I, I hope that men have had a glimpse into <laughs> what it's like to be, you know, raising a family and trying to get work done. And there, you know, there are some phenomenal guys out there that are doing amazing stuff too. And I, and I just think now I think we, we have a, a mutual respect for each other. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the role of women to make more noise and it's not just the role of, of men to let them. Um, so if there are any women out there who are running businesses or thinking about it, read a book called Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, who is the CEO of Facebook. And it is just brilliant and it's so inspiring. Um, and I think particularly for family businesses and independent businesses, women have something, they have some, some skills and some characteristics that make them brilliant business leaders. Different, but brilliant. So yeah, I just... Yeah. Absolutely, that's a, that's a crazy statistic, I have to say. Yeah, but, no. I mean, but yeah, I mean, t I guess timing is is probably one of those key factors, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Really you know, when I when we had a baby, you know, Nick could go back to work after two weeks, mm. but I, I physically couldn't. I'd grown a yeah. small human being inside me, yeah. so it's, it's really hard. But I think if you have the support network around you and you ask for help, that's what's important. When I mm. had post depression I was really reluctant to ask for help and no one ever spoke about it and I think if you can talk about it and you can help someone else then you know you've done a good job awesome we are I've just noticed the guys have now posted the link 
as well and that is not <laughs> that is that's us by the way posting your link so <laughs> the guys are on it you need to have olympia, a word with olympia. Fired. olympia what are you doing come on just throw it in the next room so anyway um we're gonna take a quick pause because i need to i've just we, i can't believe the time has flown by but i need wow. to promote this we have launched a new video um today which is we're, we're kind of back on the road with our giant wednesdays so here's a quick uh, preview of what that looks like and then we'll come back for some final questions So that is our giant Wednesdays. We are now back for season two. Yes, we've made them seasons. And the first one is launched today with Sam Caesar, and that's talking about um, SEO versus PPC, pros and cons of. Um, I've seen Sam in the chat today as well, but it's a really cool video. Um, and yeah, I think it's already ranking organically as well, which is pretty cool. So we're, we're happy with that. Um, I can't, again, we have like three minutes um, left. And can, can you see my screen, Amalia, properly? If I were, to, if we try the game, is it no, going to work? Great. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of we'll give up on the game, um, which means that Liam from last week is still in the lead with <laughs> with a pitiful score of two. Um, oh, I could have smashed that. You could have definitely beaten that one. It was a disaster. I don't know what he was up to. Um, but um, yeah, so we'll, we'll kind of um, forego that. I guess maybe just some sort of sort of final kind of points around any any advice that you would you would kind of give to um you know businesses in these kind of time periods is there any kind of bits that you're you're finding you're talking about more than than kind of most in the, in the conversations that you have yeah so a, a lot of people are still feeling uncomfortable about selling and uncomfortable mm. about marketing um and i i had one um firm there landscape landscape gardeners and you know she said i, I don't i don't and, and i'm allowed to go into people's gardens and we're allowed to do that stuff but i don't feel comfortable um because people are judging us for trying to still sell our services. Mm. And, and I sort of said, but, you know, if your business goes under, think of all those jobs that are gone in the local community. You know, if the government has said you're allowed to do it and you, you know, take on board all of the social distancing rules, then you're perfectly entitled to market and sell your business. You know, we've got to, we've got to start ramping things up slowly but surely. Um, and then I said to her, and it's not just about selling, it's this thing about showing up. So mm. building a Community, still keeping in touch with your customers and your clients and I, I do have another cheesy phrase and it's if Go you it. bring value to them they will bring value to you mm. so that's what we're trying to do with our members and to small business owners if we can help you and we can inspire you and motivate you and give you good practical stuff then one day you may want to become a member of family business place or you may want to come to one of our events but if we can bring value to you with no ulterior motive just because we want to do the right thing, then one day that may, that may bring value to us. But I think you have to be authentic and you have to be genuine in today's world because if you are not, you will get found out really, really soon. So just be yourselves. Stay true to the values, particularly in family businesses. They're built on strong foundations. Um, and just just be who you are and you know people will embrace that. Love it. That is a fantastic summation and I couldn't agree more. That is some fantastic advice for everybody there. Um, guys, we're going to um, we're gonna call it there and say thank you very much to Amalia for being a part of the show and, and hopefully um, you'll be able to join next Thursday for uh, the summit. Uh, what time is it kicking off? Amalia? It starts at 10, 10 and then Sir Luke Quilter is on. Oh, don't, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, people. Come on, one step at a time. I thought there's a few years a bit away from that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to really pull my finger out to a client to earn that one. But um, yeah, we will, we will try in the meantime. But thank you very much for being a part of the show, Amali. Been an absolute thank superstar. You, and thank you. um, right, yeah, we are just gonna uh, final messages from me, guys. We got um. I know it's Bank Holiday Friday. Um, we will be doing a show this Friday with myself and business partner Ant. He was on the last Bank Holiday Friday because, well, you know, we've got nothing else better to do these days. We just talk about work most of the time. So um, he's going to give us an update on the, the challenges that we've been facing as a business, how we've been kind of dealing with those and hopefully share some advice. So if you found it useful, please do like and share the content. I think if you're watching on YouTube and repeat, click the bell so you can get any notifications of new video content coming out. But I hope it's been of use. Best of luck to everybody and hopefully see you on Friday. Thanks very much for listening.